friends. I could do that all day long, all the live long day working on the railroad. I could do, I could literally do that. What's this? What's going on here? What am I in the disco? Hey friends, Eric Andres, your guitar sage here. And today, my gosh, we're gonna have so much fun today. This is part one of a three part series, how to make scales, not sound like scales anymore, but how to make scales sound like solos. Um, we're gonna have a blast today. Part one of a three part series we're gonna do this week. We're gonna do two weeks from now, and then we're gonna do one on the final week. That's how it's gonna work. And I've got assignments for you, so if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, it doesn't matter where you're watching, but you should do a few things here. I've got a few directions for you that are gonna make everything so much easier for you today. Uh, some extra bits and pieces that you'll be able to walk away with, so it's not just you hearing me blabber. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you this bit today, but I'm also, I have, I have a PDF that I'm going to walk you through today and so that you can have these bits and pieces to, to not make these scales sound like scales anymore, but to actually make them sound like solos. So how do you do that? First off, uh, I know you're watching on Facebook or YouTube and that's totally cool. In the link or in the, the description of this video, you're going to see a link and it should say something like yourguitarsage.com slash uh, scales. April. Get it? Yourguitarsage.com slash scales April. Or just click on it and you'll see it in the description there somewhere. And that'll take you to some some bonus videos inside of my unstoppable guitar system. So I'm kind of giving you a, a sneak peek into that system there. And you're going to have a PDF that you're going to be able to download that you can walk through with me here that I painstakingly created for you with lots of colorful graphics and all the forms that we're going to be talking about today in the whole nine yards. Okay. So I want you to do that before anything else. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? We're going to be giving away a guitar today. That's right. We're going to be giving away an Epiphone PR 150. We, we gave a bunch of these away actually in December. It was super fun. So, and we love giving stuff away. So, uh, what we're going to be doing today for folks that share this video, that's how you win is if you share, well, that's how you're eligible to win, I should say. So we love the comments and we love that you guys, uh, you know, participate and send up the smiley faces and all that and the thumbs up and, and what have you. But the best thing to do is to share share, right? Sharing is nice, a nice thing to do. And we follow those folks that share us and we reward them. So we're going to be giving five, uh, we'll be doing six winners today. Actually, we'll be giving away five of my books autographed and sent to you, to your door. And then one lucky person is actually going to win a PR 150, an Epiphone PR 150 acoustic guitar. All right. Um, we're also giving away 100 $100 coupons to my complete guitar system. It's the number one guitar lesson course on Udemy. I just want you to know that if you have any questions about any of this stuff, just look in the description of the video. But nonetheless, that coupon code is available for you right now, even if you don't want to watch this series. Okay. Uh, yeah you know where to find that. It's in the description of the video. And that's literally a hundred bucks off of a normally $145 course, something like that. It's 69% off today. Uh, there's no specific reason why it's 69% off. We just wanted to do a hundred bucks off. So um, don't let your little perverted minds go any place that shouldn't. Okay. There's no reason other than we wanted to do a hundred bucks off for you today. Cool. All right. Good. All right. So we're going to have a lot of fun here today. And before we begin, um, another thing I want to let you know about, if you don't know that the rules are changing on Facebook and YouTube, they are. And a lot of times when I do a live broadcast or when I have a new video coming out, unless you are uh, subscribed, obviously you need to be subscribed to both Facebook and YouTube, but even then you're not getting feeds like you should because it's just, they're, they're changing the rules. So on YouTube, and I think we may have a little video clip for it. We'll, we'll play it at some point here during the broadcast probably. But, um, on YouTube, there is a little notification bell. If you don't click that, there you go. Uh, you got that subscribe button there. You got to hit that. Um, and then there's also that little bell there. If you don't hit that bell for all, then see what happens is you don't get notified when good things are happening. And I'm giving tons of stuff away like we did like last week. We gave away $5,000 worth of goodies, guitars, all sorts of stuff. All right. So tons of stuff for you there, my friends. Uh, make sure that you do that. And on Facebook, there's a way to do that as well. We'll get a video for that eventually, but there is a way to do that on Facebook. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to get into the lesson now. 
And uh, what I want you to do is if you have your PDF available right now, I want you to open it up because we're going to be walking through that. And then after the broadcast, I'm going to be answering your questions in real time. Pretty cool, right? Whoa, the internet's spacey. I know, you can do all sorts of really crazy things like talk in real time and answer questions and what have you, okay? Uh, I remember the first time I got on the internet, this was way a long time ago before many of you were born, and, uh, and I remember, I'm, I'm pulling up my PDF right here, I'm not wasting time, I'm, 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 I've got a point in this. And I remember talking to somebody in um, Hong Kong, or in China or something, I'm like, you're really in China? I, just, I don't know, it's pretty funny. Uh, now, of course, we do that all the time. All right, so friends, let's get into what we're talking about today, which is the pentatonic scale. So this is part one of a three-part series. And today, today what we're going to be talking about is just the pentatonic scale. What's it about? What does it look like? What are the forms that I want you to learn? I'm going to be giving you some homework today. And if you follow this, friends, I promise you, take it from a guy who just like you, would play through my scales, and I'm like, well, when I solo, why does my stuff just sound like scales, okay? And then I learned, oh, well, it has to do with phrasing, it has to do with chunking, it has to do with taking sections and memorizing little sections and phrasing, just like if any of you caught that I just played the solo to Stairway to Heaven inside of that little fun little reggae part, uh, because you can derive licks from all these different bits and pieces as you're learning, and they become part of your vocabulary. So we're going to be talking about phrasing and that sort of thing today. Um, and then part Two of this series is what I call minimalistic blues. And the third part is called call and response. Now, what I'm doing is I'm literally giving you a ton of content, my friends. I'm giving you uh, some of my best content inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System, and uh, including the minimal minimalistic blues section and the call and response section. Some really high-end stuff here, but I promise you, even beginners can get this because I make this stuff super simple, okay? So stick with me here. I promise you, you're going to get this. Let's talk about the pentatonic scale right now. You can be, uh, you can be going along with your uh, PDF, that would probably be a good thing. You don't have to read it, um, but we're probably, more than anything, we're going to be looking at those diagrams, okay? Uh, so that's, that's what we're going to be looking at. But let's talk about it first. What is the pentatonic scale? Penta, of course, meaning five. So it's the five-note scale. It's basically five choice notes out of the scale. Uh, I don't like to give information that uh, that's going to confuse you, so we won't get into some music theory about it. There's just no need to, even if you were into that, it's not gonna really help you that much. So let's just say it's the five note scale. The major scale has seven notes, right? We've heard this one. Well, the pentatonic scale has five. One, two, three, four, five. That's it, okay? Uh, whereas, oh, I should say, uh, let's do that again. Here's the A major pentatonic. Or here's A major scale. Here's A major pentatonic. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Whereas the major scale has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then back to our one again. Pentatonic. It's a little bit more of a simple scale and let's remember something friends when it comes to music when it comes to art some of the most simplistic things are the most beautiful things the problem with musicians especially in the beginning is they really try to complicate things because they because just like in anything else one assumes that if you complicate it that that's the part that they're missing this is why it doesn't sound good that couldn't be further from the truth when it comes to playing music okay what the problem is with folks is they don't understand that it they're, they're really the need for being simple. You try to complicate things, especially before it's, it's time, uh, it's just going to sound worse than it sounded earlier, okay? You want to keep things simple. And the pentatonic scale is a great scale for keeping things simple, but my gosh, it's replete in... In fact, when I did that, uh, one of the most famous solos of all time, uh, Stairway to Heaven, I just did that over that chord progression, right? 99% of that solo is pentatonic. So, 
If you think the pentatonic scale is boring, my friends, then you got another thing coming because there you go. The most, one of the most famous, if not the most famous solo in the world is written from the A minor pentatonic scale, which we're gonna be talking about today, okay? So, pretty cool stuff. Uh, so, five note scale. Now, what I want you to do is, uh, I, I, I want you to read through this entire PDF when we're all done. In fact, some of, uh, of we're going to go right to the end of this PDF because I'm going to read over your homework with you and, uh, and then we're going to talk about these bits and pieces. So the first part is to read and understand the PDF to the best of your abilities. I said here, if you don't understand it, read it again, read it again, read it again, okay? Not everything's just going to come to you like that. It takes repetition sometimes, but I try to make it as simple as possible. So I want you to make sure that you read that PDF all the way. I want you to watch the three pentatonic videos that are in the URL that I gave you earlier, which is yourguitarstage.com slash scales April. It's in, the, it's in the description of this video, okay? You're going to memorize forms one and two. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. And your assignment will be to practice that from 30 to 60 minutes every day. Eric, I don't have 30 to 60 minutes every day. Well, how many minutes do you got? Use those minutes. If you got 29 minutes, use 29 minutes. But I'm imploring you to, to stretch yourself and try to do at least 30 to 60 minutes every day. I promise you, you'll be developing a great habit and you're going to get better at the guitar. So you're going to be working on forms one and two. Why forms one and two? We'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. But basically, because so many of the licks that I just used were just forms one and two, and you can find a plethora of great bits and pieces in there, especially on strings one, two, and three. So, and that's what minimalistic blues is all about. Basically taking parts of scales and really getting familiar with them and understanding how to phrase with that, as opposed to saying, oh, I got all these scales, I don't know what to do with them. That's your problem. That's most people's problem. They have too much, and they just don't know what to do with it. Okay, simple, 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 simple. Got to think simple. Okay, and then uh, last one is start feeling the blues. What I want you to do basically is to start listening to some slow blues. B.B. Uh, King, Steve Ray Vaughan, there's a plethora of, of great players out there. But why slow blues? Well, slow because I want you to hear it and I want you to feel and understand what's happening phrasing wise. Now, it's okay if you don't like blues totally fine. You don't have to love blues, but it's a great genre, one of the best genres, in fact, to understand phrasing and breathing when it comes to your instrument. See, for instance, if I play this here, and I'm playing through the scale, this is what a lot of you do, right? You have this problem. You play through the scale, and you're going like this. well, why does that sound like a scale? Because you're playing a scale, right? This would be like if I knew, you know, if I picked up a dictionary and I was like, apple, 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 aardvark, 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 and I was just going through the words and just saying the words, well, that doesn't make for a very good, uh, or if I just read them in order, that doesn't make for a very good sentence, right? Everything starting with an A, it just sounds like I'm reading the dictionary, and this is why it sounds like you're playing through a scale, because you're playing through a scale. Now, you might say to yourself, well, what are you doing, Eric? Well, I'm playing through a scale, but I'm not. Okay, basically I'm using, it'd be like the difference between right now I'm speaking, all these words that I'm speaking right now are actually in the dictionary, but it doesn't sound like I'm reading out of a dictionary because I'm not, right? So if you, if I pulled out a dictionary and you didn't see it and I started reading it, you would know immediately that I was reading out of a dictionary because it would be in order and it would sound like very canned and this, that, and the other thing, right? So in the same way that we don't want these scales to sound canned, you got to stop playing. When you're, if you're playing them over a chord progression, you have to stop playing them like, or, like a scale. You need to take a breath and you need to go. That's what I mean by a breath. You play a little phrase and you hold off a minute. You say, well, how does that sound? Eh, not too good. Okay, well, what could you do differently? Could you end up on a different note? So there's time to think about what you played. There's time to just play. And then if you play something well to go, yeah, there it is, everybody. Listen, enjoy, and here comes something else. That sort of thing. Basically, what you want to do is get in the groove of speaking, right? When we speak, we don't speak like this in just a complete monotone without any sort of inflection whatsoever, without stopping or breathing or anything like that, because that would get really, very, very boring and that would totally make people turn off the camera and this, that, and the other thing. So instead of that, we talk like this. We talk in phrases. We talk with excitement. We talk with 
exclamation points with question marks, Ron Burgundy. You, you, you can talk with all different ways, right, with inflection. And so because of that, you know, we're used to doing this because we mimic our parents, right? We mimic whoever raised us. Uh, in my case, it was wolves. Um, now we, we we mimic who it is that we're that we're that we're reared by. Okay, um, and so we're going to do the exact same thing when it comes to guitar. Who's rearing you on guitar? It's whoever you're listening to. It's who your favorite players are. That's what's going to naturally, instinctively, probably come out of you because that's what you're 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 pulled to. You're drawn to. Okay, your soul loves Led Zeppelin, loves the way Jimmy Page plays, and so that's probably how you're going to play, or Stevie Ray Vaughan, or BB King, or Joe Pass, or whoever. So in this case here, that you can think about those as your parents, if you will, and you're mimicking them. Now they're saying things, and so imitating them, copying them. What do you mean copy, Eric? I want to come up with my own stuff. Man, I can't tell you how many times I heard a young musician tell me, I don't want to copy anybody. I just want to play my own stuff, man. And their stuff sounds like crap. You know why? Because it has no form. It has no sort of backbone. It has no sort of lineage, right? There's a reason why we don't come out of the womb and start our own whatever, um, religion or, or, or language or whatever. There's a reason why there's things that have sounded great. Now you can, you can change those, you can do little tweaks and what have you, but you wanna go on things that are tried and true and that work, okay? So the pentatonic scale here is something that's used by all guitar players since the beginning of time, especially form one, which is this first form I'm gonna show you, okay? So um, what I want you to do is, if you're looking at your PDF right here, and if you're not looking at your PDF, that's okay, you can follow along too, but it would probably help you, you know? Uh, but if you can't right now, for some reason, you're sitting on your hands or something like that, then it's okay, okay? Here we go, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So this, uh, what I'm gonna be showing you right now is A minor pentatonic scale form one, okay? This is known as form one, most guitar players call it form one, and it looks, like this. So here I'm in the fifth position, okay, meaning my first finger is behind the fifth fret. And in this case, I'm playing the A minor pentatonic. I'll explain to you what C major pentatonic is. Uh, basically, it's the same scale, but played slightly differently. So in this case here, I'm going to be playing with just my first, third, and fourth fingers. I'll be leaving my second finger out today, or at least for this. And the phrase goes like this, or this, the scale goes like this. It goes, Starting on the sixth string, we have one, four. Those are the fingers, okay? Or well, let's say let's say the frets. Let's say five, eight. On the next string, five, seven. The next string, five, seven. Five, seven again. And the last two strings, five, eight, five, eight. So on strings six, two, and one, we have five, eight. And on strings five, four, and three, we have Five seven. So again, here we go. Five eight. Five seven. Five seven. Five seven. Five eight. Five eight. Easy enough, okay? If you know this one scale and you really get to know it well, okay, you literally can can solo all day long on this. Watch. Watch this. I'm not gonna do it all day long, but just get the idea here. It's not the most prolific solo in the world. Obviously, if I'm stuck in one place, I can only get to so many notes and what have you, but you can see that really just from that, I can do a whole lot, right? That first, uh, with the exception of that one note there, that's um, Stairway to Heaven, you know? Now 
Now they went for, he went for a second here up into form two, which is also why I want to show you form two is because that is a, another exceptional form that you're going to be using a lot, especially in the higher strings. And uh, so, so the first thing that I want you to do, you're going to have two weeks to work on this until we meet again, right, on the next Thursday, so or two weeks from, from this Thursday will be the next time that we get together. We won't have a live broadcast next week. I'm giving you specifically two weeks to work on this stuff. Okay, you can move ahead in it. That's okay, but because I have pentatonic videos on YouTube for you to help you with this stuff. But really, what I want you to do is I want you to understand this from a core level. I want you to be able to 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 know this pattern and pattern two, and then we're going to be talking about different keys and that sort of thing. We'll talk about that today, actually. Okay, so. We've got this form one, we've got this form two. Let's look at form two. Now again, um, this is on your PDF and you're gonna see it. It says A minor pentatonic scale form two. And it looks like this. So he, in this case here, my first finger is behind the seventh fret. That's known as the seventh position. And we're gonna play fingers two and four, one and four, one and four, one and three, two and four, Two four. So let's do that again. So starting on the sixth string, we got two four, one four, one four, one three, two four, two four. Okay. Okay. Real easy to play. I just want you to get familiar with it. And in this case here, while you're practicing it and memorizing it, that's really what I want you to do. For those that are more advanced, obviously do something else, do something more advanced. But for those folks that are just starting off with this, which is 99% of you, then just memorize the form, be able to play it up and down, start maybe start at different notes, be able to you know test yourself a little bit because eventually we're gonna be going into phrasing and you need to be able to do this not from the first note every time. It needs to be little bits and pieces, okay? Now, let's talk about uh, changing keys with this because eventually you'll need to. It's not super crucial with what we're, with what we're talking about. In fact, we're going to try to keep everything in like A minor or C major um, for this. If I can remember to do that, I will, I will try my best to do that. Um, but let's talk about it. It's absolutely so easy to change keys. So easy that when I teach this to people, I've taught this for decades now, every time I teach this to them, they're like, I don't know if I understand this. And they get, they get really like this look in their eye like, they, like they're confused because it, it's so easy that they are trying to, to, to speak more into it. And that happens a lot with guitar. But I promise you, it's this easy. Okay, so check this out. This scale starts on an A. Now, usually we play a scale from octave to octave or from, from root note to root note, in this case an A. I can play it up here. I can keep going, but usually from A to A or C to C, that sort of thing. Just a good thing to get in the habit of doing, okay? So this is in the key of A minor, and so I can play this over an A minor chord progression like this. That's why when I rest on the A, it sounds nice. getting a little carried away there, but, um, okay, so we got this form, right? Now, memorize form one. Memorize it, memorize it, memorize it, memorize it. If you don't memorize it by, in two weeks from now, when you come back here, you're gonna be lost because we're gonna be working on phrasing. So this is like as if I'm teaching you how to speak English and I'm like, okay, learn dog, and then I show you a picture of a dog and learn, uh, you know, or spot, you know, and Bob and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm teaching you what those are and you got the pictures by it. If you don't know what those are, then when we start saying phrases like 
Johnny bit Spot or Spot bit Johnny, you're going to be confused, okay? So we need to understand how we can change these phrases around and what have you. And if you're fumbling with the scale, you're not going to get it. So make sure you do that. It's really, really important. It's not just going to happen by stacking something else and stacking something else on top of it. In fact, it'll make it a lot more complicated. So don't do that, okay? All right, so you got this scale here. Now, form two, we talked about form two. You've got that one as well. And when we're changing keys, really the only thing we got to do is move these up and down the fretboard. Literally, this is how easy it is. So if this is in the key of A, minor, then if we wanted to play this in A sharp minor, then the only thing we need to do is take that first note and move it up a half step. That's literally the only thing we do. The rest of the scale plays itself. literally all you have to do if we wanted to play this in the key of B we move this first note up to B now you may be saying to yourself well Eric I don't know the notes on the fretboard well then you haven't gone through my free course that I've been handing out for a, a, a while now it's worth about a thousand bucks if you come visit me here and I go through these lessons with you otherwise it's there for you for free there is the URL my friends, don't do it now, but do it afterwards. Write it down or open it up in another tab or something. But man, if you, if you play guitar, if you own a guitar and you haven't gone through that series, I don't know, I can't help you. That I literally created that for the thousands of people that, that comment each week, each month, and they're like, Eric, how about this and how about this and how about this? And that answers like 90% of the stuff that they're, that they're asking. So I want to create something for you that gets you through it. And, and in that series, you'll see there's a lesson that teaches you about the notes on the fretboard. It's super easy, okay? Anything I teach is going to be easy, I promise. I don't like complicated things. I'm not a complicated guy. I'm very simple, so I like to keep things simple. So now we're in the key of B here, right? Just because we moved it up, A, A sharp, B. If you don't understand that, watch that video. I promise you, you will after it. And so scale two or form two would move up the same way too. So here's form one. Here's form two. Right? And just like, it works the same way going down. If you're like, I really want to play this in G, well here's A, A flat, here's G. So I'm going to play that form same way. Form two. So a great exercise for you when you're practicing this at home, when you're like, okay, I got this, I got it, I got it. Okay, now play it in every key. <gasps> Just move it, dude. Just move it up one fret or down one fret. It's not that scary. The only time it gets scary, not, is when you go in the open position. So you're going. Uh-oh, now I need to go further down. Well, you can do the math. It's easy. Okay, it's real easy to do. I promise you, you're going to get it. So you want to be able to play that all the different keys. I'm just playing the first you know, six strings, six, five, and four here, so just to get the idea. And I'm just playing it in every single key. So if there was a chord progression playing for each one of those keys, I'd be perfectly matched with it. So that's how you play in different keys. Now, now again, we've, we've kept this all in the key of A in, in minor, with the first finger being the tonic or the key of the song, okay? Some of this is going over your heads, I know. It's okay. You know why? Went over my head too. Went over Eddie Van Halen's head and Jimi Hendrix's head too, until they got it. So what you do is you just keep on with it. Keep surrounding yourself with people that are doing it. Keep watching my videos. You're gonna get it. It just takes everybody some time. It, no one ever just, it happens. It's not like an angel comes down and, uh, and just blesses you with the ability to play. That's never happened to anybody, okay? Not even um, Robert Johnson and he didn't sell a soul to the devil, okay? Practiced a lot. So, um, all right, so that's how to do it in the minor key. Now, here's this thing people say like, Eric, you talk about the pentatonic all the time, and you're like, it's the most important scale in the world, and this, that, and the other thing. Why is that? Well, because with this one form, literally, I don't care if someone throws a country chord progression at me, or reggae, or blues, or rock, or jazz even, 
like more simple jazz, ones that aren't that aren't doing temporary key changes all over the place, which is common in jazz. But we're talking like basic song structure. You can use the pentatonic all over these in a major or minor key. And the only thing you have to do is understand how to how to fit the scale onto the fretboard. It's the same scale. So what do you mean by the same scale, Eric? Well, think about this. Every major key has a related minor key. I have a video for this on YouTube. It's called Relative Major and Minor. If you want to look for it later, you can type in your guitar sage, Relative Major Minor. Okay, and it'll explain this. It'll clear up the mystery there. Don't do it now, though. So for every major key, you have a related minor key. For every minor key, you have a related major key. And it means this. If we walk up to a piano and we just play the white keys, we're playing in the key of C. Why? There's some theory there. I'd have to explain it to you, but just trust me. If you just play the white keys, you're playing in the key of C. Or you're playing in the key of A minor because C major and A minor share the same sets of notes, the same sets of chords, the same structure, basically. Uh, there's no sharps and flats, which are the black keys. None, none in the key of C, none in the key of A minor, ever on any instrument since the beginning of time to the end of time, amen, okay? Literally, there's just not. So that's, so they're related. That's why it's called relative major and minor. This is true for every major key and for every minor key. There's always a related key super easy to find. If you take your pentatonic scale, if you're playing it in a minor key, if it's an A, then the only thing you got to do is go to your pinky and that is the related major scale or the related major key, I should say. So here's A minor, then this note's a C. Then if I wanted to play C major pentatonic, I play the same exact form, but I don't start on an A. I start on a C and I end on a C. Remember we said when we play a scale, we typically want to start on the root note and end on the root note. So here we go. Here's starting on the C. That's literally that easy. Now, if I were to play this, right, if I play the same scale over it, now you're like, Eric, you're playing C major pentatonic over that. How can you do that? Don't. Well, I can do that because it's the same thing as A minor. It shares the exact same set of notes. They're identical. There's nothing different about them. Nothing. Now, I may choose to start on the C and end on the C, or choose to start on the A and end on the A, and in that way, yeah, that's a little bit different, but the notes are the exact same as far as the, the subset of notes, okay? So, but the way you play them might be different. And I always compare two people talking about something politically different. Not that that ever happens anymore, especially on Facebook or anything, but let's say you have Two people talking about a subject. I won't even say the subject, because if I do, people will start getting crazy. So let's just say it's about candy, and some people are like, candy is sweet, and people, other people are like, well, candy's artificial. I don't know, it's a terrible subject. Uh, I don't know, uh, let's say, I, I, I'll use this one, war, okay? You got one person who's, who's like for war, and you got somebody who's not for war. The person from four wars talking about guns and freedom and safety and borders and this, that, and the other thing. The person who's, who's anti-war is talking, uh, you know, freedom and safety and borders and this, that, and the other thing. But it's the way that they're saying it that makes it different, okay? Please don't anybody say anything in the chat about war. Please. We're talking about guitars today. Go on Facebook and argue there. All right. So it depends on how you say it. So for instance, if I'm playing if I emphasize the key of C major, if I emphasize the C note over this A minor chord progression, it's still going to sound pretty good, but it's not going to sound as good as if I was emphasizing the A, okay? So, pretty much in, oh, I say pretty much, in any minor key you have a related major, in any major key you have a related minor. So it's just knowing how to, how to use the scale. So for instance, if someone said, uh, Eric, I want you to play in the key of G major. Okay, well, I can do this a couple different ways. I've got my form here, and I can automatically think, well, the related minor key is E minor. Why? Because I just know that if I go three half steps down from my major key, I've got my minor key. If I got my minor key, if I go three half steps up, I have my major key. 
I say this in a bunch of different ways because I know some of you are missing it in some ways, but in another way you're going to get it, okay? So, so I could just slide my pinky up to the G, and now I'm playing in the key of G major. Or E minor, however, however we're looking at it. Okay, so if that doesn't sound very clear to you, then read that PDF that I've got for you there because it will. And then I've got other videos for you. Like I said, the relative major and minor is going to help a lot. Uh, but I want to check in with you guys. I want to see where you're at because this is some heady stuff. Even though it's simple, for some of you, you're overthinking, you're overanalyzing, and it's literally so simple. Okay, and I and I want you to understand that um, you kind of have to let go and 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 not interject your own things of what you think is happening here. Like I want you, I want you, want me, to, I want you to allow me to lead you a little bit. Okay, and uh, but let's get to some questions because I want to make sure that you guys, you guys and gals are getting this, and I want to make sure that it uh, that it makes sense and all that stuff. Okay. All right. So I'm going over to Facebook and then I'm also going to be on, on YouTube here. So I want to make sure that everybody gets their questions answered today. Okay. So here we go on, uh, on Facebook. So you can let those questions fly right now on Facebook. Okay. And then I'll tell you when I bump over to YouTube, I don't want you guys, I don't want your thread to go up and then you, I miss your question. You get all mad and stuff. All right. I don't want that. All right, so, and there may not be any difference between A minor pentatonic and the blue scale, Nawaz is saying. Well, we could get into that, but I'm just, I'll say one note. Basically, there's something called the flat five, and I have a video for this that has a lot more detail on it. You just type in your guitar sage blues scale, but essentially, here's the pentatonic scale. <laughs> scale says this. It just has that one extra note in there. So here's pentatonic. Blues goes like this. And if we extend that up another octave, and so then you got Bit of a bluesy sound to it. Well, it makes it definitely sound a lot more, a lot more bluesy, right? All right. Where is the PDF? Gary is saying. Gary, look in the description of this video. You're going to see a link that says yourguitarstage.com/scalesapril. That's where the PDF is at, my friend. All right. All right. All right. And uh, oh, I love all the little thumbs up and hearts and all that stuff that makes me so happy over on on YouTube or on uh, Facebook nice thank you little ego boost <laughs> all right uh, let's see uh, the questions oh and by the way friends use those question marks okay please use those question marks when you're when you're asking a question because I'm looking through these questions very quickly obviously because there's a lot of them and so uh, if I don't see a question mark, it's gonna. I'm not gonna be able to see it. Okay. Oh, good. Jim is saying it's really making a lot of sense. Light bulbs going on. Yay! That's what we want. We want light bulbs going on. Right. Uh, okay. I'm gonna answer another question. Then I'm gonna pop over to YouTube. If you haven't already, friends, download that PDF. Okay. Because I'm gonna be giving you some some material over the next month. Here, we're gonna start doing these series because I really want to get in depth with you guys and help you to to start doing whatever it is that your heart desires on the guitar. All right. So. Make sure you do that, uh, yourguitarstage.com slash scalesapril. That'll get you to the right page, and it'll get you the, the free videos that aren't available on YouTube. They're only available on the Unstoppable Guitar System, So, but I'm making them available to you today because I love you. Uh, okay, so here we go. So question, Mark is saying, when you're talking chord progression, are you actually going up to the four and five? I don't often hear you shifting. 
Okay, question. When you're talking about chord progressions, are you actually going up to the four and the five? I don't often hear you shifting. Hmm, Mark, I'm not sure what you mean by that question. I mean, I know what the four and five is, obviously, but uh, so, you know, this chord progression here, this is the minor six, the five, the four, and then I throw in a major three there for a little little fun, a little little craziness there. So that's what that is. Okay. So there's the four and five there. If I was playing a you know straight up like twelve bar blues, then it might be like. That's a one. Here's the four. The five. Here's the five, four, five. Okay. So, but so I don't know what you mean by shift. You'll have to tell me what you mean. Do you mean shifting like like fingers wise? Because. I'm not, if what you mean by am I playing like a specific scale over the four and another scale over the five, that can be done. I've written solos and, and, and licks and stuff like that before, but that's, that's not what I'm doing today. I'm trying to keep it very simple and just stick to one key, if that makes any sense. All right, Jude on, on Facebook is saying, would you advise playing across more frets or more strings? Should I spread the scale across more frets or more strings? Jude, no, keep it simple right now. Follow what I'm telling you here. If, if you can't solo, when you're, if you can't solo in form one, having 9,000 more forms is not going to help you. It's going to limit you. Don't do it. It's bad news. Get good at one position, because once you understand that, look, when you go to a country, you learn, where's the bathroom? Do you take credit? Where's the police? Do you learn some basic things? Because those are the things that you're gonna need, right? Um, you don't need to say uh, some complicated this, that, or the other thing. Typically, you have basic phrases. And if you don't learn those basic phrases on guitar, then you're like that, that guy who's going to Europe and you're need to know the whole language before you go to a different country. It's like you don't have to do that, okay? All right, be very simple, very, very simple, okay? Uh, Jason's saying, you have an app? I did have an app, and we're working on it again. I'm not sure if it's out yet. I don't think it is. All right. Okay, I know the pentatonic scale, but I have a hard time with solos and keeping up with my bandmates, so what can I do to remedy my sucky solos? You're in the right place, my friend, just watching this. Okay, watch part one, part two, and part three of this series. Seriously, that's what you, that's what you do. Um, all right, so let's talk YouTube. I'm going over to YouTube, friends. So get those questions ready at YouTube. And please, 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 please put a question mark. Okay. Killer lesson. Uh, Team Memphis is saying changing keys clicked. How uh, your wife's Disney gig go? Are you are you gonna be a cartoon voice one day? I would love to do voiceovers. I really would. That would just be so cool. Um, but that, alas, that is a very competitive gig, just like anything else. And there's some great, great, great uh, talent doing that these days. Are the PDFs the same? as in the Unstoppable Guitar Course. Uh, Mary Beth, well, since I teach in that one too, yeah, they're gonna be very similar. I mean, there's some, there's a couple little different pieces that I'm adding here today, but if you're inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, there's nothing, basically there's nothing that I do that's outside of the Unstoppable Guitar System in any other thing. I, I put all my brain power inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. If you friends don't know what that is, try the free course. You'll have the first 30 lessons in it and you'll have a great a great idea of what that's all about. Uh, YourGuitarSage.com slash 30. Okay, if you want those. Make sure you go there. Uh, yes, be kind to animals. Thank you, Farah. Be kind to all beings, right? Uh, all beings want to be treated with kindness and love. Whoa, that's profound. Well, I, it, you'd think that it was the way people act sometimes. So yes, really, everything really does want to be treated with kindness. I know you'd think that animals just want to have, uh, you know, just be 
I'm not going to get into it. You know what I'm talking about. Just be kind to everybody. Just be cool. Just be cool, dude. Um, what else? Okay, so um, when we move scale, oh, this is a great question. Uh, Dion is saying, when we move the scales, are all shapes move with the first shape like a train? And I love that analogy. Yes, indeed. So like everything just moves up. The whole thing is like a, it's like a slide rule. If you're going from the key of A to the key of, of say, B, then you're going to move everything up two frets and everything moves up the same. If you're going to play in the key of C, you move it up one other fret, etc. Everything just moves up just like that every single time. Cool? All right. When I, uh, Don is saying, when I play a set of chords, how can I figure out where I have to play my pentatonics? Well, Don, the chords determine what key you're in. And I have a video for that. If you type on YouTube, if you type in your guitar stage key, I will teach you how to find the key of the song. So really you need to know what the key of the song is. And once you watch that video and you understand that concept, so basically I'm telling you I can't, there's not a sentence or two that's going to get you there. You have to watch that video. And so you have to understand how to find the key of the video, the key of a song. Once you understand the key of the song, then that, then you say, okay, we're in A minor. Well, then I'll use the A minor pentatonic. Oh, we're in G major. I'll use G major pentatonic. That sort of thing. Cool. Good, good, good. All right, uh, Robert is saying, which electric guitar can we buy for a beginning class of learning to play guitar? That's a great question, Rupert. I get this question a lot about equipment about gear so much so that I actually created a little gear store where you guys can check stuff out uh, most of that stuff is on Amazon but some other places too Sweetwater and what have you'll see it right there kit.com slash your guitar sage kit.com slash your guitar sage so check that out because that has a lot of the suggestions for uh, and a lot of these I've done reviews for, but those are going to be my suggestions for any gear. If you're looking for amps, guitars, picks, anything, that's where you're going to find it, okay? Uh, all right, so if you don't have a loop for chords to play against, is there another way? Barry, I'm so glad you asked. Yes, indeed. There's a few different ways. If you're inside the unstoppable guitar system, we have nearly 600 jam tracks created specifically for this that say, this is the BPM, this is the genre of music, this is the style, this is the key, and I'll even give you suggestions for them a lot of times of, of, of what you should be using over those. And in fact, inside the system, we even have these things called visual jams, which basically show you the chord progression as you're playing it so that you can say, oh, here's the C chord coming up. I got that little C chord lick that I'm going to play right there, etc. Okay. Now, if you're not inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, then you can, on YouTube, you can type in Your Guitar Sage Backing Tracks. Your Guitar Sage backing tracks, and uh, some of those will have the visual jams. I think we have a few of those, and other ones will just have the music playing where you can you can noodle over the top of it. Okay, that's how you do it, and those are even more fun actually than just looping because you've got uh, well not more fun. It's just a different way of doing it because with the with the tracks you've got drums and bass and this sort of this sort of thing, right? Okay, uh, Jimmy Neutron, right? Jimmy Neutron has that little that little hair thing going up. That's who I style my hair after is Jimmy Jimmy Neutron. Which five notes should we use in the pentatonic scale? Shahid, go to go get the PDF that's uh, that's in. You'll find in the link in the description of this video. Download that PDF and that has the five notes that I want you to play in all the different forms. So if my rhythm player is playing bar chords, Chad is saying, do I just follow his bar finger to solo in the right key? Nope. Nope, that's going to sound not good. Sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. And there's a little bit of truth to what you're saying, Chad, but it's not absolute. So if it's not absolute, it's going to lead you the wrong way. So don't do that, okay? Watch this series, Chad. It's going to get you there. Um, you got you to gotta have the know-how, right? Um, if you see a car driving and you're like, oh, it's just a steering wheel? Cool, I can do this. That'd be bad, right? So that's why kids get in cars and they do this and they're like, oh, I can do this. It's just a steering wheel. There's a little bit more to it. You got to know those things if you want to do it right. 
What loop music should we use for the pentatonic scale? Joe, inside the Unstoppable, I've got tons of jam tracks. Otherwise, on YouTube, type in backing tracks for your guitar stage. Uh, is there a backing track available to practice with? Yes. I just told you where it's at. <laughs> Max, uh, backing tracks for your guitar stage. Can you improvise on, on the minor swing? Yes. So you're talking like... Um, um, let's see... Um, let's see that's not that's not uh let's see uh <laughs> So we get um Minor Swing, it's by Django Reinhardt, and it's just something in E minor, or in A minor in this case, and uh, but there's this one chord in there that, that you can that you can throw a kind of a wild card note into, and it's 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 the, the sharp seven, and uh, you just do that over the five chord. I know that's going over some of your heads, but I wanted to answer the question really quickly, so you'll hear it when I get to it. It sounds real funky, so. So here's just uh, pentatonic. There's the note. idea so that's just using the pentatonic except for that one note on the five chord I'm not gonna go into all the details of that obviously because that's a whole whole nother thing all right um, okay great 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 uh, and that was the minor swing there okay yep 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 yep, yep. and um, Yeah, oh, Scott, uh, Scott's asking about the tuners here. Dude, this is just old school, slotted headstock. That's 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 all it is. Uh, for some reason, that always throws people off. It's just old school. That's the way they did it back in the day. Um, okay, for chord progressions, I used YouTube. Okay, no, that was not a question. Okay, your complete guitar system, beginner to advanced versus unstoppable guitar system. Bishop's asking. I'll do this really short. But the unstoppable guitar system is absolutely everything that I've taught. There's almost 600 videos in there. No songs, well, a few, a few songs, but mainly like public domain songs, because they teach all my songs on YouTube. But like, that's the nitty gritty. That's like if you were like, man, I love playing songs, but I really want to be a great guitar player, I'm going to go get a guitar teacher. Or get the unstoppable guitar system and save a ton of money and have a lifetime membership to the unstoppable guitar system, along with these jam tracks and everything else we're doing. Uh, so that's the unstoppable guitar system. The, the complete guitar system is what we're doing today where we're offering you a hundred dollar coupon off of off of that system um i believe let me let me make sure let me make sure that this is where i think it should be but here we go oh yes 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 go to Chris, by chance, do you have the, the link for that? I kind of forgot it. 
uh, for the for the coupon code for the. Com Okay, so it's in the description. Okay, sorry about that. All right, it's in the description of the video, my friends. Uh, that's that's where you'll want to check that out. Um, and so the complete guitar system is what we're doing today. It's a hundred bucks off of it, basically. It's normally about a hundred and forty-five dollar program. We're doing it for forty-five bucks today. We have one hundred coupons for a hundred bucks off. So take advantage of that um, today. I will. Uh, it's ten thousand dollars worth of coupons. That's cool. That's fun. Uh, Sixty-nine percent off. Okay. There's no specific reason. Keep your minds out of the gutters and let's keep moving, shall we? Uh, okay. More questions here on on YouTube. But all that being said, the complete guitar system is the number one guitar playing system on udemy.com. If you've never been there before, you check those guys out. Really great stuff. You can learn all different sorts of things there, but that's like paid YouTube, if you will. But, you know, people say, well, why would I pay for that when I have YouTube for free? Well, do you find yourself jumping around on videos all the time on YouTube and not getting what you want? That's what you get with free. And what you get with Udemy is you get rated courses that are rated and this thing's top rated and it's the number one guitar system there and I think we've had for that for this one course all, with all my courses on there I think we've, we're, we're coming close to 100,000 students which is pretty cool I think with that particular course I think it's like 62,000 people have gone through that course a lot of people and it's got a, a 4.5 or 4.6 uh, rating something like that it kind of toggles in between those two so it's a great course and it has a massive amount of videos in it and it's uh, you know if you're comparing it dollar for dollar uh, the complete guitar system is going to, at least today with the discount, is going to be a better deal. With that being said, if you're really invested in your guitar player and you're kind of like a lifelong player and you really always want to be good, then I'd say get into the unstoppable guitar system. But today's special is the complete guitar system. If that makes it sense. If that makes sense. Is it possible for one song... Uh, thanks, mate. Is it possible one song has a bunch of different keys? I'm sorry, you'll have to rephrase that a little bit differently. But you can play one song in many different keys, definitely, and one song can be, can move around in different keys as well. So hopefully that answers it, right? Uh, with these courses begin live every other Thursday, what time EST? Kathy, your EST, I'm central, so you're one hour ahead of me. So when I start at 11 a.m., it's 12 p.m. where you're at. And um, normally we do these every Thursday. In this case here, we're going to be doing one today. And then in two weeks, we're going to have part two. And then in the last week of April, we'll be doing the part three, okay? So if you are not subscribed to my social and stuff like that, then you're probably not going to be in the know, okay? And uh, you need to do that, obviously, because we have lots of people who want to know about this, and I can't, like, reach out to you personally. All right. All right. All right. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Um, another question here is, been learning on acoustic only. Do you recommend any learning electric at, that t at the same time? Nah, it doesn't matter. really doesn't matter. Can an acoustic player play an electric guitar without learning it um, I'm just a beginner it's just it's like this it's the difference between driving say like a sports car and a 4x4 it's like you can drive them both but they're going to handle differently so yes indeed if you can drive a Porsche you probably can get in a 4x4 and you drive it around the street and stuff but you're not going to be as apt as you are in your Porsche because you drive the Porsche around all day so it's going to feel a little bit differently but by all means you could pick up one instrument and just go to town right is there a way I can send you a video of a scale that I personally use for warm up? Uh, being reason it's uh, reason being is to understand what I'm actually doing because I play by ear. Uh, sure, upload it to YouTube and then send me a link. That's the best way to do it, my friend. Uh, during a chord progression, do you have to match your solo to the current chord in the progression, or do you stay with the key of the song? That's a great, great question. Here's the deal: usually with pop, rock blues, those sorts of playing, you usually just stick with the key that you're in, okay? Typically, 
reason being is it's going to sound more succinct. Now, when you're talking about jazz, jazz players think a little bit more mathematically and they like to embellish a lot of things because that's the sound of jazz is, is they like it to be a lot of little nuancey type things. That's where it gets its really cool sound from. And the way jazz players think a lot of times is they say, oh, this chord, I could play this scale and this scale and this scale and this scale. And then they do. <laughs> Whereas usually with rock, blues, um, country players, that sort of thing, it's a little bit more pop oriented. So it's a little bit more acceptable to the ear. It's a little bit more elementary. Uh, and uh, that's why there's not a ton of jazz top 40 hits. And that's why there's a plethora of the other all right, it's because it's more palatable to the ear. So the more you start playing on top of the chords where you're like, okay, well, here's this chord, what can I play over that? The more jazzy it's gonna sound or the more, you know, kind of disjunct it's gonna sound and less, it's gonna sound a little bit more offensive to the ear. When I say offensive, I just mean not as elementary, not as simple and easy to follow. That's all I mean. It's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, not like that or anything. You're not going to be hearing a... It's, well, you might in jazz sometimes, but typically not. All right. Uh, man, you guys are killing it with the questions today, man. You got some good, good stuff here. Um, that was a great question. Is there anything that isn't in your unstoppable guitar system? Thank you, Mary Beth. There's a lot of stuff in there. I try to, I mean, the whole reason I created that was because I tried to take everything out of my brain in different parts of the the last few years and make it into a course. Cause I'm like, if I, if I wanted to know it, somebody else would too, you know? What do you think of the Squire Mini Strat? I don't know anything about it, my friend, sorry. I don't, so I can't say anything about it. I was told to practice scales with metronomes. Yeah, you can, and that's good to get your timing down and to get well, to get good at um, to get good at the scale. But eventually, you got to get away from that because you want it to become real and you want it to sound like you're playing. Um, my favorite artists never get on stage with a metronome and just play to a metronome. So think of it as a practice tool, but it's not for performance. And so it's good to practice to every now and then. But but you know. You gotta make it real, you gotta make it sound good, you know? Uh, that swing had tones of John Bonamassa in it. Oh, well, man, I take that as a compliment because he's a beast, thank you so much. I'm sold on the, on, on, and I want this unstoppable guitar system. Thank you, Arnold, well, um, you know, unstoppableguitarsystem.com. If you wanna get a feel for this, everybody, listen to me. If you wanna get a feel for the unstoppable guitar system, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. That's where you're going to get the feel of this thing and it's going to give you 30 of the top lessons that I teach all my students. I say it all the time. If you visited me here in Nashville and we went over this, it would literally cost nearly a thousand bucks for the amount of time that I'd be teaching you this, these same concepts that I'm giving to you for free. Yourguitarsage.com slash 30. There's absolutely no catch to it. It's just there because I like giving stuff away. Just like I gave away $5,000 worth of stuff like a week or so ago. It's just fun to do and we can do it so we do it. Um, there's no catch to it. It's just cool. It's fun to do. I mean, would it be cool that everybody you meet on the street, give them a hundred bucks if you could afford it? Like, I think that'd be cool, right? At least the, the, the kind people, that'd be, that'd be awesome. When it comes to learning the base, the first basic nine chords, should I master those inclusions, transitions before moving on? I'm not sure what you mean inclusions, but, but yes, get those nine chords first. There's a reason why I have them as nine essential chords is because you're going to use them all the time, whereas the other thousands of chords that are possible, you're just not going to use very often. You can, but you know, don't mean a thing, but ain't got that swing. It, indeed. Indeed. Um, okay. I'm jumping around here a little bit just because the chat's being kind of jumpy too. Um, how much money does that B&G go for? I think this one goes for around 1500 bucks. But they go a lot, they go for a lot more as well. Is it advisable to finish the Udemy course first and then join the Unstoppable Guitar System? Hendry is saying. No, not necessarily. Um, in fact, in my opinion, the Unstoppable Guitar System is, is easier to navigate because I can do more with the, the platform, the, the background, the platform, uh, because it's my own website. 
but uh, Udemy has some limitations to what we can do. We can't break, we can't do like subcategories and that sort of thing. So in my opinion, Unstoppable is a lot easier to navigate. So should you wait? Uh, that's up to you, but is it advisable? Um, no, not necessarily. You can jump in right away and you'll, you'll know where you're at. Um, okay, small hands are really killing me. Is there a solution to that, like a certain guitar on certain songs? Jacob, on YouTube, type in your guitar sage, small hands, before you do anything else. I mean, watch the rest of this, but open up another tab and watch that. Okay, there's a reason why I created a video specifically for you, Jacob. Seriously, watch that video and it will answer the questions. Uh, can you explain one more time how you play minor pentatonic in a major key? Dijon is saying. Um, yes, okay, so it's easy. Uh, if we're in the key of A minor, then I can play A minor pentatonic. If I'm in the key of C, then I can play C major pentatonic. Okay. And basically the only thing that we're doing is, is we're starting on a different note and ending on a different note, but it's the same set of notes. So in a minor pentatonic, you'll start with the first finger. And if you wanted C major, which is the relative major, you'd start on the pinky. Now if you were trying to play A minor and A major, that's easy too. Watch this. Here's A minor. Now if I wanted to play A major, I put my pinky here, but play the same form. Now listen to what I said. Don't interject anything else. I put my pinky here and I play the same form. So the, f the form goes one, four, one, three, one, three, right? So if I wanted to play A major, I put my pinky here and I play one, four, one, three, one, three. Now I'm ending right here, but it's still the same scale, okay? So for instance, here's A major. Here's A minor. Oops, sorry, threw in a blue note there, but you get the idea? Okay, and make sure you download that PDF, friends. If you haven't already, yourguitarstage.com slash scales April. Link is in the description of this video. That's going to get you the PDF that's going to explain all this for you, okay? Uh, question about your course. Is it about learning songs or fundamentals and theory? Mark is saying, Mark, it's about fundamentals and theory and technique. Because here's the deal, Mark. I've got a thousand-ish videos on YouTube that teach songs, right? And I can do that all day long. There's also some copyright issues in regards to you can do it on YouTube, but you can't do it in other places unless you're getting all sorts of licensing. So I have licensing taken care of on YouTube, but for personal websites and stuff like that, it is a whole nother rigmarole. All right, so the songs are on YouTube. Fundamentals in the theory, as if you were going to a guitar teacher, is in the Unstoppable Guitar System, also in the Complete Guitar System, the one that we're having, that we're doing a hundred bucks off of today. The link's in the description of the video on Facebook and YouTube. So if you're interested in it, friends, if you've been like on the fence about learning, I'm literally handing you a hundred bucks today to the, listen to me, to the number one, and I'm not just saying that, you can go right now to udemy.com and you're gonna see that it is the number one guitar lesson course on there, and Udemy essentially is paid YouTube. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's upper echelon stuff, okay? And we've had lots of people going through that. Nearly 100,000 students have gone through this course already. 100,000 students. It has a 4.5 rating, and I'm giving you 100 bucks off today. So if you're serious about guitar, you literally can get in with like more lessons than you'll probably ever use the rest of your life unless you're really aggressive for 45 bucks. Link's in the description of the video. All right. Oh, you see here, what we're talking about here, right here. Eric, I have short fingers. Any tips on building my ability to stretch more than four frets? John, on YouTube, type in your guitar sage, small hands. Do it because it is going to explain everything for you, you know? Uh, I get that a lot, that I look like Ben Affleck. I don't see it, but I get it. Mr. Horse, should I eat an omelet? Hmm. I'm saying no. I'm saying no because um, I'm vegan. That's why. 
it's true. Have you ever heard of the jam stack? I think you mean jam stick. Will you purchase it when it comes out? The jam stick, is that what you're talking about? If so, I've given many of those away. Yes, I have a jam stick. Uh, I th actually, I think I gave the last one away. But yes, we've had lots of them come through here and we've given them away. The jam stick. Uh, it's, well, I had the shorter version. I think they have a longer version now. Are there any recommend, and I have a video, a review video for it if you want to see it. It's on YouTube. Just type in your guitar say jam stick. If you're talking about a jam stack and that's something different, I'll have to, I don't know what that is. Um, are there song recommendations listed anywhere in your courses where, there's, where the lessons would relate to particular songs? Mike, the way I get around that is like if it's, if it's blues or if I, a jam track or something like that is we create our own jam tracks. Um, so that's what we do. Uh, but everything that within inside my courses correspond to everything that I'm teaching on YouTube. There's nothing that I'm, I mean, it's the same dude, right? So I'm not gonna be saying anything different than I would say in those two bits and pieces, except inside the unstoppable guitar system or the complete guitar system, right? Two different platforms, one's my website, one's like a YouTube type-ish website. Um, and my website has more material on it and stuff, but it also costs more. So just depending on what you want to do. Uh, but I talk in the same way and I relate it in the same way. So if you're so if you're learning songs from me on YouTube and you're taking any one of my courses, it's gonna be so much easier because you're truly gonna understand this stuff in ways that you that you hadn't before. You know? Does that make sense? I think that probably does. Um, okay, good, good stuff. Alright, I'm gonna pop back over to Facebook. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm typing. I'm, I'm, I'm popping back over to Facebook here, um, and we're gonna get to some more questions here. Uh, okay. I tried to share this, but couldn't. So can I just have the guitar? Yeah, Brian. It's coming on out to you. I'm sending it right now. In fact, I'm not even gonna finish the broadcast. Um, no, I prefer you to share it, buddy. Uh, so the UGS is your top of the line program, sir. Yes, it is indeed, Glenn. It is the top of the top of the top. It's like doesn't get any better than that unless you're visiting me here personally, obviously. And if you do that, then um, if you do that, then um, it's going to cost a lot more. If that makes any sense. Okay, what's up with the angry faces? I don't know. Someone may be mad at me for something, you know. Why do the pentatonic and blues sound better on electric guitars? I don't necessarily think they do per se, but that you can bend with them, bend the notes and stuff like that a lot easier and that makes, it, it just feels better, right? Uh, so, can you give us an example of using form four around at the 12th fret for a solo and how to be more melodic? So, yeah, so here is, um, so here's form one, right? Form two. So here, form three. All right, so now here, and here's the deal. When you're talking about form four, it's really form, it's form one, but starting on the fifth string and you got to compensate for that B string being being you know tuned differently but other than that so that's how I remember it now here I got to move this up a, a whole a half step but I got this cool little like I like that it's this little like stair thing and so I could do a nice little arpeggio there Thank you. 
Good, good. Great questions, by the way, my friends. You guys, you guys are killing it today. All right, we're going to probably go just a few more minutes here, maybe like five more minutes, and then we're going to close up shop for today. So, so before we do that, before we close up shop, let's talk about some essentials. Let's talk about some things that you really, really need to do. Okay, starting from the top, um, make sure you download the PDF, okay? YourGuitarStage.com slash Scales April. All these links that I'm talking about should be in the description of the video, okay? But either way, I'm going to say them, okay? So yourguitarsage.com slash scales April is where you can download the PDF and I have some videos for you that can't be found anywhere else. They're not on YouTube, friends. They're inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. That's my mammoth course that I always talk about. They're inside there, but I'm providing them for you for free along with that PDF, okay? So that's, you definitely got to do that because you want to make sure that you get one part one down so that in two weeks from now, when we're doing part two, you've got that scale down and you've got, you're, you're on the right track because we're gonna get over this, finally. Our scales are not gonna sound like scales anymore. I'm gonna sit with you and we're gonna do this, okay? They're gonna sound like solos, but you gotta get the phrasing down. In order to get the phrasing down, you first gotta know the scale. So many of you don't know the scale already, so that's okay. For those that you do, then you can move along, you can you can, you can can do the, the backing tracks I talked about on YouTube, your Guitar Stage backing tracks, or if you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System, do it there, okay? So make sure you download that. Uh, for those folks that are serious about guitar, this is the last time I'm gonna say it, for those folks that are serious about guitar, yourguitarsage.com slash complete guitar system. You hear that? And that link should be in the description of the video as well. Yourguitarsage.com slash complete guitar system. If you want a hundred bucks off today, we're literally knocking a hundred bucks off today. It's 69% off. Do that. Um, last couple of things, and we're going to keep going with a little bit here, and I'll and I'll have some plan on the way out. But um, make sure that you're subscribed to me on Facebook and on YouTube, and also make sure that you hit the notifications on YouTube. Okay, right there. Uh, that's on on um, on Facebook. There, you want to make sure that you do that little that little bit of follow because if you don't, what happens is you're not gonna know what the heck's going on, okay? You're just not gonna know. And on YouTube, you need to hit the little notification button. It's a little like a little bell and subscribe and do all that good stuff. Because if you don't, YouTube and uh, Facebook, they're changing the rules. So you won't be able to, um, to, to see the live feeds and stuff like that unless you're doing that stuff, or at least you won't be notified about it, okay? Good, good, so make sure you do that. Also, last chance to win, friends. If you share this video, what we do after the broadcast on all these is we pick some winners. And five winners are going to win a book from me, my um, Guitar Mastery Simplified. And some lucky winner is going to win a guitar today. What? Yes! You win a guitar, you win a guitar, you win a guitar. I feel like Oprah. So somebody will win an Epiphone PR150 today, which we gave a bunch of these away in December because we like giving stuff away. It's fun. So let's keep doing that, right? Uh, so, But you got to share the video. If you don't share the video, then you don't get a chance to win. That's the way we do it, right? Okay. So I'm going to go over one more time to YouTube and I'm going to answer some more questions there and then we'll do some playing on out and you guys have all the information that you need, right? Now would be a great time to ask those questions uh, on YouTube if you don't, but uh, bottom line, I'm going to answer a few more questions and then we will, we, will, um, we will play on the way out and then we're done, okay? Uh, what's the difference between ultim the uh, you know the unstoppable guitar system and the com complete guitar system? The complete guitar system has less videos. It doesn't have jam tracks. It doesn't have the um, it doesn't have the live lessons that we do like we're doing right now. Except it's just like a small group of us. Uh, so we don't do that inside the complete guitar system. The Unstoppable Guitar System has nearly 600 videos, nearly 600 jam tracks. I constantly add new material to it each month. In fact, um, we've we've got new videos that we're that we're we need to put up that are going up. We just did a bunch of more like visual jams that just went up for uh, January, February. We got March and April that we're doing here. Um, so nonetheless. 
the, the unstoppable guitar system has more to it. But if you're on a budget, you're on a budget. If you can't afford the unstoppable guitar system, then today you get a hundred bucks off for the, um, hundred bucks off at, at 69% off for the complete guitar system, yourguitarstage.com slash complete guitar system. So make sure you do that. Okay. Uh, reminds me of the band Squirrel Nut Zippers, which I love Squirrel Nut Zippers. And yes, by the way, that, that little vamp there is called Minor Swing by Django Reinhardt. And it's just, like, it's just a classic and it's, it's swing music, which I, which I have a whole swing course inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. So if you like swing music, um, do it. Mike, uh, just took advantage of the $100 off. Seems to be a good deal. Thanks, my friend. Good. So glad that you're, that you're in there. Um, say hey to me when you're when you're in there so we answer those questions like daily so yeah okay okay um want to answer a, couple, a few more questions here how are the cats they're doing great uh, they are always getting into something there was actually a mouse in the house the other day and they caught the mouse i was sad about that but i guess i was happy that we didn't have a a mouse in the house, but I hate that they killed it. So yeah, that's what cats do, right? Um, okay, can you use multiple pentatonic scales in one solo? You can. When we talked about that a little bit. It's going to sound a little bit more jazzy because you're walking on top of each chord, but you can use the same scale but different forms all day long because it's really the same notes, right? Um, Helen is saying, hi, Eric. Tour are such a, a big help because I'm a cancer patient and I'm Helps me to stay strong. Yay! Thank you so much, Helen. Uh, fight the good fight, Helen, and and stay strong. And I'm so glad. Music, man, music is a healer to the not only to the soul but to the body. It really does. They've proven this. So, dig into that music, Helen, and our our prayers and our thoughts, um, vibes are with you. Um, so thank you so much for saying that. Uh, would you recommend your website or Udemy? Obviously, the Unstoppable Guitar System is what I would recommend. It's like saying, do, do you want a Oh, I don't know. Do you want a Tesla or do you want a high-end Lexus? It's like, mm, I think I'll take the Tesla, please. Although I love Lexus, right? But that's kind of like the, the, the difference between the two. Uh, one is even better than the other. The one is amazing. Uh, there's a reason it's the number one course on Udemy. But that being said, the Unstoppable Guitar System is yet that much bigger. But the special today is on the complete guitar system, not on the other. So, Eric, can I uh, get a fret scale chart and notes? You can, Dewey. If you click on the link that's in the description of this video that says yourguitarstage.com slash scales April, and that will get you there, and then you'll be able to, uh, to see all the stuff that we're talking about today. All right, my friends, that is it for today because I got a lunch meeting with a very famous songwriter today, Chuck, Mr. Chuck Jones, who is a, is a classic... Uh, songwriter and uh, a buddy and I'm going to have lunch with him right now actually so um, I will say hi to him for you and uh, friends thank you so much for being here today you guys are amazing I love the questions I love that you guys are getting so into this and getting so like integrated and the, the questions are, are great I'm seeing uh, Jason just said many light bulb moments and improvements uh, you're so welcome for the UGS lessons Jason and thank you for being here thank you for everybody thank you for sharing if you haven't already friends share it make sure that you're in on the winnings on the on the giveaways and uh, two weeks from today. So next week we will not meet, but two weeks from today, same bat channel, same bat time, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube, we'll be doing the next, the part two of this, which is going to be called Minimalistic Blues. For those of you that are inside the Unstoppable Guitar System already, watch those videos, okay? For those of you that aren't, I will make those videos available to you, some of those, most of those videos, not all of them, but I'll make most of them available to you, many of them available to you, in two weeks from now. And then the follow, the last, the third part of this program is going to be call and response where I play something and then you play it back. And I'm gonna give you those videos as well, but we're gonna do this in real time. Basically, I'm gonna have a chord progression going. You're gonna have your speakers up. I'm gonna play a lick. You're gonna play a lick. And we're gonna start super simple. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna get you to understand this in that full capacity of what we're talking about. So we're doing this in three steps, okay? But you first have to understand how to play that, that pentatonic scale. Then we have to learn how to play it very simply because 
by God, the stuff you're listening to, I'm telling you, everything that I'm doing is simple stuff. It may seem complicated. It's not. It's completely simple. I'm a very simple man with a very simple brain, okay? And I promise you that I'm not thinking very complicated here. You can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Trust me. Okay, so that and then lastly, that's what, what we're going to do is the call and response, which is kind of bringing all that stuff together where I play a lick and then you play a lick. <sighs> Won't that be cool? We'll be doing that with several hundred people at once. So, yeah, let's do that, friends. So, you know where to find me, um, yourguitarsage.com and all those places. Make sure that you subscribe and all that wonderful stuff. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in two weeks. And on the way out here, we got the... Um, Minor jam, minor swing, and I'll be noodling with that some. So here we go. friends.